for executive session? I don't. Anyone else have anything? Yeah. All right. And then I guess the need to amend the agenda. We're adding dog warrant to new business. Yes, please. Thank you. Make a motion to accept the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, the uh, minutes of April 21st. Anybody have any corrections or anything? I do. Um, under the hazard mitigation plan, um, I thought we decided that putting that in there did not trigger any regulatory requirements. The way the minutes read, it sounds like it does have a regulatory requirement. Well, I'm that it was intended to be head no, but let me take a look. Where are you on? Is it page? Uh, I don't know, page, but it's hazard mitigation plan. It's yeah. the second page. Okay, yeah. And it does. It says she confirms yeah. that it carries regulatory requirements. Okay. No. I had intended that to be no regulatory. Oh, that's, there's a big difference. Of course. <laughs> and I can make that change. You can sign it. I'll make it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, and also the, um, I guess I was confused. Maybe I was confused last meeting, but the, um, about the substation with the 20,000 being split between, so was the um, annual budget and the capital would be that? Uh, that yeah. yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Each. <laughs> Uh, that was right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I will circulate. <laughs> it's getting better. Right. Does anyone have any questions on the orders? Um, <laughs> there are a lot, so. Yeah. Um, on the stuff that came in the packet, 4810, you've got three. Uh, you got January, March, and April paid to the Green Mountain Solar. Why and where's February and why is it all bunched up? Yeah, I asked Pat that and she said that apparently they had not sent the prior two invoices and sent them to her in a batch. And it's a monthly um, fee that we pay and then there's a lot of complicated accounting for how we're getting the solar credits out of the Chester, Vermont um, solar farm to reduce our electric bills. Yeah. And then on the ones that came tonight, 1680, new ladder truck, pressure VL, $1,100. What's... Yeah. Talk to uh, a couple about it. I believe it. that's a pressure relief valve that failed. Yeah. It's off of the two ladder trucks back. Mm. It's for the large diameter holes where it comes into the truck. They had to replace that. Oh, but it's not on the brand new truck. It is on the new truck. But you had used an old it's, piece It was replaced from previous trucks. Oh, so you took it off the yeah. old, so, okay. So All right, that's, eight, okay. Eight, 10 years old. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. All right. That's <laughs> All I had. Anyone else have anything? On the Depot Hill, the uh, Otter Creek engineers, I see this pretty close to $5,000. Is that uh, to do with that pump station business? It is. Yeah. It's their oversight of the project. And mm -hmm. those bills should be coming to a close. As you may have seen down there, they've done seeding and mulching. And um, all that I think is left on that part of the uh, bond project it was that seeding and mulching. So we should see final invoices from Casella 
and from our three domains next few days where we can this should be pretty much the end of their work it should be at the end of it on on the depot hill portion of right. it they still will have some involvement as we go forward with purchasing the mobile generator and as we do the aeration at the wastewater treatment plant questions okay. i'll send the orders yes. down <clears throat> including payroll Uh, and then we can hear them. <laughs> well, okay. um, hey, folks. Is there not the, room? the conference room is <laughs> dangerously crowded. So we'll call you in when it's your time on the agenda. Thanks, John. Thank you. No, but keep it up and I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got them all. Hey, well, if you don't, I won't tell you. Check it out. <laughs> Here's the table. <sighs> Everybody wants to come in person these days, I think. Yeah. Got enough of the Zooming. I know. Fourth of July, we're supposed to kind of yeah, open things right up anyway. <laughs> It's like watching a clock, though. I was going to say, we're going to pay real quick. I was going to say, you don't pass it away. Can't blame that one. I'm going to blame it on you for not telling me quicker. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to hide it. Check in here for you, and I didn't want you to have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, town manager's report. Um, as you know, we have, ten we have tentatively scheduled Pittsburgh Day to take place on Saturday, September 4th. The town has booked Satin and Steel to perform, and we reached out to celebrate in Vermont rentals regarding one or more tents to be observed. We will have our first planning committee meeting uh, to discuss the scope of this year's event and to discuss preparations on Thursday, May 6th at 5 o'clock here in the conference room tomorrow evening. Um, this uh, can be attended personally or via Zoom video or dial-in options. Jennifer Pop will begin work as Pittsburgh's new recreation director on Monday, May 10th to enable her to work, have some overlap with Nelson for a week of transition. We look forward to working with Jennifer and wish her the very best with her new career. Um, Jason um, Davis has followed up on the adopt adaptive martial arts coin drop dates 
it is suggesting either Saturday, June 26th or Saturday, July 10th from nine to noon. If it's all right with you, I will encourage him to pick the latter date since the first date might conflict with our townwide tag sale, which is scheduled oh. for that day. And that might yeah. be more traffic up and down. Um, the um, approximate start date for our truck route bridge repairs is approximately July, uh, June 1st, according to Neil Daniels construction. And uh, finally, happy Cinco de Mayo. Thanks. <laughs> Anybody have any questions for John? Uh, any select board member remarks tonight? I got some. Okay. Now, where do we stand in relation to the COVID regulations? Seems to me that small meetings and gatherings, if you got enough people vaccinated that you can go back to normal. Well, no see, mask. We certainly are getting updated guidance uh, on a daily basis. Can we check that out. How, how many people in here have not been vaccinated? Have not been? I have been. How many have been? <laughs> are you asking who has been? Yeah. yeah. Who has or who hasn't? Who has. <laughs> who hasn't made a difference? It would appear to me that the people that haven't been vaccinated are holding the rest of us hostage as far as going with the regulations that are in place. If you'd like, I can present a kind of a complete uh, latest uh, status on CDC guidance at the next meeting. I'd be happy to. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Awesome. Anyone else? Hmm? Any public comment tonight? Yes, we have Mr. Soros who'd like to speak to the board. Yes. Um, you know, Hayden? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm Joe Mazars. I live up on the Oxbow Road. Um, last probably four years, um, there's a bowl in my uh, my property that just it's all around, um, but there's a bowl there, and I've been trying to fill it in slowly. Um, and Castine has come in the last couple of years, um, and we have a good relationship. Um, they've been bringing in just small brush leaves in the fall, you know, grass clippings and everything. And it's been working out very well um, for both of us. But I know the town, since I have the new garage down at the depot, you guys supposedly are running out of room. I'd like to open it up to the town. Um, you know, I guess I'm looking for you guys to kind of okay you know, to opening up to everybody. And I don't want to put big stumps in there unless we have, unless we have communication, you know, um, I'm retired. Um, so I kind of put her out there just about every day when I see mm -hmm. that somebody dropped off something, I push it over and it, like I said, um, it's been working out very well um, for the people that, you know, I've let do that. Um, you know, I request that no garbage, you know, papers or whatever, and they've all been very good. Uh, there's a gentleman, um, George Casey, I think it is, from Chittenden that also dumps there. Um, but I guess, you know, I just want to fill in the hole. I don't plan on building a house there. Um, you know, I live across the street from it. Um, I don't want it unsightly. Um, but it would be nice, I think, for the town of Pittsburgh to have a place that they can, or the townspeople can have a place that they can any day bring, um, you know, brush, small brush and stuff like that. And I'd like to this summer put a place where just the leaves go. Um, and that way in the fall, all the leaves can go in one section and it'll compost mm -hmm. down. Um, you know, I don't want just total, you know, trees in there. I, you know, um, and it's just mostly, you know, grass and leaves and small brush. Um, and like I said, it's been working out well. Um, and I'd like to fill in the hole before <laughs> my lifetime. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, surrounded, <laughs> um, you know, it's higher everywhere else except for that. It's a bowl. I call it a bowl. Um, 
and it's located um, as soon as the tire ends, my driveway's right there. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to go and look and see what I've done and everything. Um, and, you know, the town's willing, you know, we can do it on a trial basis, you know, just in case it gets out of hand. I don't want, well, like I said, I don't want any garbage in there. Right. Um, you know, and that's going to be hard to police, but, you know, with me being there, um, you know, right on top of it. Um, I usually pay quite attention who goes over there and stuff like that. You know, it would be benefit me and hopefully it'll benefit townspeople. Because right now, I guess you don't have any place where stumps or brush or- I don't know where we're at then. I think we're still- We have an still area in the dump. rear of the transfer station. Yeah, at the back. But with the new building, it it's is tighter, tighter, no oh, question. It's a lot tighter. And we do have the ability to chip small diameter material that we come in, but we really shouldn't be burning down there anymore no. because of the yeah. fabric on the yeah. <laughs> no <kidding>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I just had a few questions if I could. Um, mm -hmm. First, do you have in mind, again, the town hauling material to your place or for the town simply notifying the public that it's available yeah, the town, for use? I mean, you know, obviously the town willing or is able to put their stuff there. The only thing, time that I think I'm going to need the to town is if it gets overcome where I can't do it. Uh, there, you know, somebody may dump something off that I can't push over. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not looking for town equipment to be, you know, isolated up there. It's, um, I ask about the town bringing stuff over because we did hear a proposal somewhat similar from Dave Sulia, your neighbor, oh, okay. in the past, and the town was reluctant to have town um, trucks hauling material from our transfer station to that on the theory that you're competing maybe with private contractors uh, and um, that um, we didn't want to necessarily get in that business of of uh, even doing it for hire. Um, the concerns I have beyond that are um, potential liability. What happens if someone that the town informs they can dump there, puts something that's yeah. bad for your property and you become upset about it? That would be a problem. And then of course there is a zoning rag, I think, limiting how much fill someone can bring into their property. Um, we know that that was debated. No, we no. As long as as long as he's not changing water flow, okay. it doesn't matter. Yeah. It had to do with water flow. Do you think it would have any impact on the way that stormwater? No, no. I saw you you don't you don't want stumps or stuff stuff like that. The stumps they'd create too much of a problem for you probably. Well, yes, um, because I got burned on it last year. Um, somebody asked if they can put some stumps, and they said they were going to push them over. They, they didn't. <laughs> right. no. Would you uh, like me to run it by the LCT in terms of a risk? I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. I have a liability concern myself. You know, um, and yes, that was one of my things worried about liability. Sure, sure. And we can talk to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and they provide guidance for municipal uh, members like town of Pittsburgh, and we can let them know what you have in mind and whether they have any concerns yeah. about it. Um, you know, I know years ago we had uh, on Mr. Phelps' property, I think there was a stump dump, um, yep. what they call a stump dump. Um, and a lot of people don't, you know, know how to get rid of some stumps or don't um, you know where to what to do with them um they're unsightly um but the only thing i would ask if somebody wants to put stumps there they must contact me my neighbor for example puts a sign out saying clean mm -hmm. fill wanted, wanted yeah. or you know fill yeah. but no stumps have you taken that measure yet to talk I have to neighbors not. about it i have not and i probably can but um I was just trying to yeah. help myself and to help the town yeah. people. Yeah. Um, you know, word of, I mean, something in the newsletter saying, you know, this is what we're going to try to do. And, you know, hopefully people will respect. Mm -hmm. um, right, right now, a, a stump dumper, a place to dump big, ugly pieces of trees and stuff. 
we don't have a good outlet for it. But I, I got a feeling that you don't want that kind of stuff either. It, lungs, we can if you were filling them. cover it up. Um, I mean, it's a whole, it's probably, I'm saying that it's 25 to 30 feet hole. Or, oh. I mean, it's higher on, so, it's higher on all sides, except for, it, like I said, it's a bowl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and I've filled in quite a bit. I mean, you know, and we haven't had any problem, you know, besides the one person that, you know, and we could ask uh, Chad if he has any particular thoughts on yeah, whether you've Chad. got material you'd uh, like to offload. Okay. You're muted. <laughs> All right. There you go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've dumped a uh, few loads like uh, ditching material already. Um, you know, when we're right in that area, it's, it's another place for us. Um, for as far as that goes, and I mean, I think if you know if it lightens the amount of brush we get brought into the transfer station, that's less we have to worry about. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Again, as long as what's being brought in there is what should be brought in, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could certainly just if we if we like the idea and we have no concerns. We could certainly generate a leaflet that the transfer station folks could hand out to people who bring in brush saying, there's a new place you might want to try. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. Say that you have a sign made up that you dump at your own risk and that might relieve any of the liability in this case, you know. I mean, uh, like I said, Tevin has dumped out some stuff. I didn't want to do it and it's worked out. I've kept up when they've come there. Um, you know, with my tractor, I've been able to keep up with anybody that's pretty much out, like I said, except for last summer, like I said, somebody, and I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> I've seen him go by, but <laughs> I will catch up <laughs> that individual. You know, uh, did end up getting him mostly taken care of, and I'll finish getting, matter of fact, Mr. Winslow is going to help me tomorrow mm. to, to clean up the rest of them better. In my way, I mean, there's some of them that they put there that are bigger than my tractor. <laughs> um, and the way I'm trying to have it set up is it should be, you know, fairly easy for people with, you know, a good size yard to go in and change it. And, you know, I just got to ask people that, you know, when they can um, dump it down as far as they can so I don't have to do it, um, you know, just... I'm just figuring, you know, it might it'll advantage to me, and I'm hoping to other people too. Um, any questions? Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, even what we're doing right now is going to notify a bunch of people that this is available. Even if VLCT says, as a official town thing, we shouldn't be doing it, we've just advertised it, and you know, but I think your biggest. My biggest fear would be people dumping garbage. Oh, that's all. You know, yeah. that's. I mean, I'm, I mean, they. I mean, I. Syndicate Road. I mean, yeah, that's. I don't know it's it just a dump. You know, I mean, granted, you're nearby, so that helps. But and, still, they you know, one person dumps. Yeah. If somebody sees one bag of garbage, you'll have a hundred the next day. Well, um, it's like old tires and stuff. I, yeah, I don't, don't know. What I don't want them. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, uh, and. Uh, you know, it's, it has worked out so far so good. And now, you know, that I'm totally retired. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's worked out so far. And I, I'm a little apprehensive. Uh, you know, I'm afraid to get garbage in there. And yeah. The only problem now is it's not filling up fast enough for you. That's, I mean, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, but the risk we run as a town is people get addicted to this and all of a sudden it's full. Right. Uh, then they're going to expect us to have another place for them to put it. So if we become officially involved. So, but I mean, as far as burning stuff, you know, maybe people rather than burning it in the village and creating all kinds of problems, this gives them a place where they can bring it and dump it. So, I mean, there's a lot of advantages to it. I think we've just got to be careful how involved we get with right, it. Right. So let me do that research and get back to you folks, and we can follow up with yep. Mr. Sarge, perhaps, after the next meeting. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Um, you know, 
like so, you know if it works out it works out if it doesn't it doesn't and you know i appreciate your time yeah okay. thank, oh, you. Thank, thank you thanks yep. thank you bro. Yep. have a good night so we do have some people here so yes. let's uh another guy out there mm -hmm. I know, I don't know who's here for what, do you? So yes, can... there's people here from both solar projects and there's people here from the salvage yard. Okay, oh. um, well, let's do salvage yard because that's a, our old business. Uh, uh, so a... um, I think Justin Grassano and maybe a colleague of his are here to talk about their request for a renewal of the town's permission to continue operating as a salvage yard. Is that right, Justin? That's correct, yes. Okay. Why don't you tell us what you have in mind? So first and foremost, the building is getting painted. I know that was a, I know that was a concern. <laughs> we have a contractor at a Lincoln. His name's Rusty Russell. Um, he's going to be doing it as he can get to it. All contractors are just crazy busy right now, but it is getting painted and it's going to be like a darker gray color. Um, so it'll calm down that area a little bit. Cool. Nice. <laughs> um, and we have, uh, we've moved forward with doing some environmental testing and starting the monitoring for cleanup and stuff like that. And things in the yard have been getting moved around quite a bit. Um, but yeah, things are, things are going well. Business seems to be picking up, um, trying to keep things cleaned up. And we're just going to keep plugging away at things. Um, three years ago, when they were before us, uh, the board had an option of one to five years for a renewal term. So you still have that option, one, two, three, four, or five. Okay. I've spoken in, in an email, Jeff, by a Susie from a zoning perspective. He knows of no particular problems or issues <laughs> arising from that site. Mm -hmm. um, but I did give you the statutes that govern it. And so I don't know if there's any other questions or concerns. Justin, you... From, I mean, I'm there occasionally. Uh, you are, or your plan is to have the dismantling of the cars indoors on a sealed floor, correct? Yep. As soon as we can get the back of that concrete building opened up, that's what our hope is. Because we put a, it's all heated in the building now, which is never has been in 40 years. So we put a waste oil burner in there. So I just need to be able to get the guys inside with the machinery. So that is, uh, that's hopefully going to be coming before winter. Do you have the capacity to accept um, used burning oil, used uh, oil for burning? Clean used oil, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How do you define clean <laughs> used oil? Um, no water or antifreeze. Oh, okay. Um, we, do, we do accept some at the transfer station and yep, sometimes, sometimes it's a challenge for us to find a user who needs what we yeah. have. I don't, I don't have a way to pump it out right now, but I do have barrels and stuff I could provide. Um, you know, we could do something like that. I could drop mm -hmm. barrels off, fill them, and I could pick them up if, if something like that worked. But I just don't have a way to pump it and transfer it. Okay. Now, what about the scrap that's down there? Would it is? I'm just throwing this out to everybody here. Uh, a small dumpster or something that that could be thrown in, so that the town could get at least a few dollars for what gets yep. brought to our transfer I, station. Is that something you'd be willing to consider? Absolutely. I don't have something like that. You'd probably want a 15 yard box just because of the size. And I only have 20 yard boxes and they're like 26 feet long. So they take up quite a lot of room. Um, so I don't, I don't have a solution right now, but we are going, we're buying some more boxes as we speak. Um, but I could definitely keep that in mind for sure. I know, I know Chad might have some opinion about space, but I know Wayne has already uh, let us know that he's feeling that the transfer station operation is uh, got very limited available space. So we'd probably want to consult with him about whether that would be able to be deployed without screwing up the traffic pattern down there. Right. But I'm just thinking, yeah. I know it gets, you know, thrown in a pile and whatever. And I mean, I don't know what happens to it, but it's a permit issue too. We'd have to see if we're permitted to accept scrap. I know most, uh, most transfer stations do accept it, but we haven't in many years. But you're getting it. So 
We, we do get it on an informal basis. I gather we have a, 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 a word rummager, oh, resident rummager, that way, who accepts it. informal donations of scrap. <laughs> okay, it's not ideal, I believe. Yeah, no, it doesn't sound it to me. I mean, I just think I got thinking of that the other day that you know this is a perfect opportunity for the town. I mean, you know, you're not talking a lot of money, but every penny helps us. Yep. You know. And it gets rid of it. And it gets rid of it and it keeps it contained. It doesn't just end up right. scattered around. It, it's out of sight in a dump, as long as the dumpster looks reasonable, you know? Yeah, I, absolutely. Would you have the ability to haul the dumpster away on certain intervals when you get yep. noticed that it's full? Okay. Yep, absolutely. Very cool. The only question I have on the heights of your pile that's starting to accumulate and get bigger and bigger, how high is that going to go? It's already been knocked down it since has, that. We had to, the reason why it got moved is we had uh, the environmental people there doing their test wells for drilling. So okay. we had to consolidate everything into a area so they could get their drilling rig around the yard. That um, was my question. So that's not going to be a, a continuous. No, like that. no. Okay. I don't have a problem. You need a motion. Need a motion. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion that we renew a contract for five years. I'll second it. As long <laughs> as you can paint the building. Paint the building. Paint yeah. the building. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> when did Perfect. you make the motion for? Five years? Five years. All right. Five years. I don't worry about All it. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> See ya. Thank you. We'll get, you the, we'll get you the form. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah, you yep, too. You so I actually do have that form, which I'll send along. No, he pretty much did what he said he was going to in the first one. That's why we only went three that, that first time. Yeah, yeah. Well, not normal. And they are, and once they move that tear down of the cars indoors, then you haven't got to worry about that no. environmental damage at all. So, you know, and I know they're moving as fast as they can along that route, so. Because we had normally used all the school five here with it back when Browns had it in keys. Right, Hank? I think that's why we went to a three year on this one. My memory serves is right. I think so. Well, you remember you getting foggy. <laughs> <laughs> I just you getting foggy. Oh, right. yeah, you're right. You're talking, you're froggy girl. <laughs> I've been foggy for years. Yeah. <laughs> It's not improving any. No. Either that or my hearing's getting foggy, one or the other. <laughs> Alicia, just in case you wanted to know who else is here, we do have someone here for on behalf of Pittsburgh BTS Retail. Yep, I see that. Uh, access right away permit. And of course, the gentleman who signed off on it, Chad is here still too. All right, sure. Hi, Abby. Hi. <laughs> Am I on? Are we on? Yes. Okay. Hi. Um, so I think you have the application in front of you for the, the curb cut for Pittsburgh BTS on Plains Road. Um, I haven't met Chad in person, but I think this is the person who I've been speaking to on the phone. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, and I guess we're just requesting that you also sign the application. Um, I don't know what information you need for, from me, but I'm here to answer questions if, if you need. Oh, I'm Abby Derry from Trudell Consulting. I'm sorry to introduce myself. Now, is this the same cut that was on the original permit from back a year or two ago? Yes. Okay. And yes, and I believe so. I believe that um, you know we had we had asked to for you to take over sidewalks. We had asked for you to take over um, pedestrian crossing signs. We had asked for you to take over the the piece of land, um, the triangle of land that um, the queries are um, transferring to you, so that we could uh, uh, realign Plains Road. But I I don't think we had actually applied for this. Um, work within the right of way permit for the curb cut, which is what we're doing tonight. And Chad's looked out over, I think, and has issued uh, no no recommendations as to any special conditions, but he has approved it. This don't involve the state. 
in any way. No, this is a town. Yeah. This is a town curb cut. It's going into Plains Road. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I move we sign the permit. Second it. Your motion for that. Oh, Eric, All Eric, done, Eric, Joe. You moved and seconded. <laughs> Wait, Joe, you need to get a hearing aid, Joe. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 That, Joe, turn it sideways so your good ears start to. Start to be... <laughs> Here you go, Joe. Thank you. Are you unanimous? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah, a good one. Thank you. What's going to happen? <clears throat> I don't anybody to read that one. Read that one? I can read it. My, 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 I like your signature. Yeah. I can't read it. <laughs> you make an ideal pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> just move no, my voice says you been a doctor. Doctor, doctor, for uh, sure. Yeah. Doctor, lawyer. So now, uh, is there one, one side pro and one side con on this one? I say you put your one. Oh, I know, because we, we've done that before. We've done it, yeah. Oh, I just, yeah, I just. That's on liquor licenses. No, Tommy. Uh, uh, it's, like this? That that's like yeah, it's, it's hard to print that small. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, Abby. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Enjoy your evening. You too. All right, and then the other people here. We have for the, both the solar projects. Is yes, that you've got Wilt paving on the phone. Yep. Oh, hey, how's it going? All right, so let's see. We got so sh I guess we'll do paving bids first then. Okay. Uh, Chad is here, and uh, he can talk about um, preferences between a wrap and no wrap. But we do have three bids, and they're summarized in the packet. And um, it looks like if you want to once again use 15% wrap, as we have on several previous occasions, um, Wilk is the low bidder. If we want no wrap, DNF seems to be the low bidder. The difference between the low wrap bid and the low no wrap bid is, in my estimation, about $12,901.09. Um, I've talked with Chad. He has had good experience with the wrap roads holding up well. And so um, that could be helpful input for you. <clears throat> There's really no, yeah. need, no need not to go with the wrap then. Well, that pretty sounds good. I'm in favor of that. I, I would make a motion that we go with Wilk with the wrap. I mean, last year they paved a lot of road for us and did a really good job. Yeah. And, you know, I, okay. I would, I have some concerns. The other company, I mean, they went over budget a couple of years ago and that bothered me, you know. So I. Of course, it all is based on estimates. I understand that, savings. but still, yeah. we're still at a lower cost. And if Chad doesn't have any problems with the wrap, so I'll make the motion to go with Will with the 15% wrap. All right, I'll second that. Does anyone Joe, have any more discussion? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. Oh, my God. Hey, Chad, uh, can, can, does that sound uh, good to you? I mean, that's your yeah. opinion. Yeah, no, it sounds good. Um, so we did three miles last year and we're doing about the same amount this year with it. So it'd be good. Uh, I think you told me that even with these prices, we're still got enough money in the budget beyond um, the paving to do the $40,000 worth of chip sealing on Oxbow, correct? Yeah. I yeah. Question what we were doing. Uh, so why why wasn't that put out to bid at the same time? Because it's a separate. It's um, a separate, specialty. Oh, so and, it's not something any of these companies do. No, I don't okay. believe so. Right. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. I need a price per ton. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, well, we have to finish. Uh, All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Uh, aye. <laughs> Okay. okay, so now I can I get sixty dollars and forty five cents oh, per ton for a fifteen percent wrap from Will. Okay, thank yeah. you. Is the chip seal something the highway crew? No, they will. Oh, I can be with a contract. I'm trying to be nice. Coming in for that, they they've got some competitive bids on the chip sealing as well, right, Chad? 
So. Yeah, well, I mean, all state asphalt is going to be doing that for us. Oh, so you've already bid that out? Talk to them. Yeah, I mean, I talked to a couple companies, and so they're all set and getting ready to move in at some point. Um, I don't know exact dates yet, but but we're getting that section of the road ready, in place culverts and shoulder work, and getting it ready for them when they get here. Okay. Uh, yeah, because that was my next question: is if that was going out for bed or what it was doing. So, so that's all set. Okay. All right. All right. We're good. Thank you, Chad. Thanks. Thank you, Wilk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, do we have someone here for the solar project, proposed solar project on Cornhill? Yes, we do. Mr. Mayma and Mr. Bernard. Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good evening, everyone. Hey, good evening. Good evening. I'm Ralph Mayma with Green Lantern. I live in, in uh, Brattleboro, and I'm here with uh, Ed Barnard, who is the landowner. I thought you might start out by just uh, saying something about how you contacted us and and, uh, yeah, I'd heard about the project um, in the adjacent uh, lands of uh, Rick Colburn. And uh, at first I was quite concerned because I'm trying to sell my property there. And I thought that they were going to impede the beautiful view of Pico in Killington. So uh, I got a hold of Ralph and he came down and then he decided uh, to offer a purchase on that property, uh, my property which truthfully I think is a good use for the property. Uh, it's basically been agricultural, but you know, like they say, make solar panels while the sun shines, or is that hay? <laughs> oh, one or the other. Well, it's <laughs> a different type of farming. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, you know, it's good for the environment. It's, you know, you're not even putting any septic in, even though I did get a septic approved when I wanted to first build a house down there, but costs of building a house are like incredible you know by the time you get done with your septic and well I mean the house I have now is huge as you probably know and it'd be half you know I'm paying half of what I would pay for that smaller house down there so we kind of gave that project up and decided to sell and and then you know Ralph's company approached us and I'm all for solar I've got little solar panels on the side of my house I got a battery bank down cellar I do the same thing with my camper, you know, twin batteries, big 250 watt solar panel. I run a 750 watt inverter at night to run my CPAP machine because uh -huh. uh, we go to a lot of campsites that don't have electricity. So, you know, I think it's just a great use for the land that's been mostly just a hay field. Thanks, Ed. So um, it's a little unusual for us to be doing two projects side by side but there's nothing that uh, prevents us from doing it. It's, it's fully within the, the uh, regulations scope. Um, and uh, it's such a good site for solar. In fact, if, if you look up on that map there, uh, it's, it's tucked in between a red area, which is prime solar, and a yellow area, which is, I guess they call it secondary solar. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a part of the town uh, that's already been designated in the and the uh, enhanced energy planning process with the Rutland Regional uh, as a good, a good location for solar. Um, and so one of the things that we have to do is request uh, for this type of site that is not a gravel pit, not a, not a landfill, not a super fun site, not a brownfield. We have to go through the process that we've actually gone through before with you for the uh, project on Rick Colburn's property and request a letter saying that it's, you consider, a, consider it a preferred site for solar. Um, it's, a, it's a formal procedure we have to go through. And so we went, uh, we came before the planning commission here two weeks ago and they approved it. And that's why I'm coming to you this evening. Um, I, this went around, so it should be in your packets. I won't belabor you with going through the entire thing uh, point by point, but I, I put together a bullet list of that's in tonight's materials it's in tonight's materials points. okay so i put put together a just a series of bullet points for why it's a it's, it's a particularly good solar site from a number of different perspectives and um that's basically why, why we're here to request a preferred site letter and to answer any questions that that you may have 
uh, before you, you think it's appropriate to sign it. So, <laughs> go ahead, Joe. I'm going. I own the big, the north north lot. How close are you coming to me on that back on that north side? Are you immediately north of Ed's property? Yeah, uh, we have a third field, I think, between us and Joe. Yes, uh, that little third yep. lucky field right there. So it's right. it'll be, oh God, a couple hundred feet, I would think, from. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. Don't don't get that idea. But uh, yeah, I haven't heard anybody say, you know, just exactly. I haven't seen anything where exactly. Now my son Ken, he he lives yeah, in he might the house. Be able to peek out the back. Your there. land borders him. The, yeah, yeah, I'm right around Ken. Yeah. He put the driveway in. I did. Yes. Yeah, just not too long ago. Yep. Yep. And so right in behind where that driveway is, that the solar panels will go from there back towards Rick's or the woods. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing we won't do, though, is touch any of the trees or other vegetation that runs along that sort of um, faint drainage ditch, you know, that depression that runs along yeah. uh, the, the north edge of the field. Yeah. We'll leave all of that vegetation the way it is, because that's, that's to the north. It doesn't have anything to oh, do with the array. Um, where that drainage ditch comes across there, you're probably staying to the south of that. I yes, that's correct. Right. Yep. So that leaves a buffer zone between that, let's call it a ditch, and my pasture. Yes, oh, absolutely. Well, what's going to be done with that? Is that going to be kept open or is it going to just grow up? To... Well, that's a good question. It's part of, so, so that land and, and where we're proposing the array has already been subdivided as well. Um, Ed, Ed and Karen took care of that. So it's, there's already a subdivision there. And that subdivision goes up into that field. So, right. But there would be no reason to use it for anything. Um, you know, we could... We could uh, You'd probably have to put a mound system into it and develop it for a house or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that would never happen. Quite possibly. Pretty wet. Mine is the same way when you get on my side of the fence. So. Yeah. yeah, and I think currently it's it's not planted in hay or anything like that, is it? It's just- No, it's just the snowmobiles go through, coming up through, uh, you know, going over towards the uh, pasture and old stuff. And I've got an old tree stand out there at that really big, big tree, but I haven't used that in years. Have you tended to brush hog it or do something like that to keep the trees down or? No, it's pretty wild. Yeah. I mean, it's- So you it's know. a golden rod and that type of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So that anyway, there, there's no plans to do anything there. No, I don't. It's not going to bother me. The other thing I just want to mention is that in this process, uh, when we when we develop the solar project, we we try to figure out, you know, and try to make sure first of all that it's it's a, approved as a preferred site, and we do a number of other things. And if we're convinced that the site's going to work, then we we send out the what's called a forty five day notice to all the neighbors, all the abutters, the town, the state agencies, and we haven't gotten to that point yet. So that's when you'll get a, an actual packet of butter. Uh, you get a packet of, of information. Uh, no later than July 1st. We're the ones that initiated the three phase line to be put out through there. Oh, is that so? For the mill. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Well, well, thank Andy. you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, for us getting the three phase brought in there, you probably, probably wouldn't be sitting here tonight. We would, no, we God, we would no. not be. <laughs> Soil type. The only reason I'm asking, I'm that's for direct to regional, and that's going to come up. Yes. So, so if we think about just that larger field, that's, that's both the Barnards and um, and Rick Colburn's. Uh, if you look at the soil map, part of it is prime agricultural, part of it is called statewide, which is still prime agricultural. Right, yeah. I can't remember exactly how it cuts across, but, but anyway, that's what it is. So, okay, because what I, I try to get through their heads is just because the state says it's prime ag doesn't mean it's prime for ag. Yeah. So I okay. just, so, I mean, what I'm, what I need to be able to tell them, because I'm going to be the one that's asked, mm -hmm. And I'm gathering it's wet, correct? I know Colburn's is wet because I know people that have farmed that and it's wet, maybe prime egg, but it's wet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're down what, below that, right? So I'm presuming from what Joe said, that land tends to be on the moist side. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So even though it's prime egg, it's not prime egg. I see what you mean. 
Well, and the other thing, too, <clears throat> the flip side of that is that if you went out there, uh, I mean, again, it's, it's all one field, one, you know, vegetation, one, one soil type. And uh, we did go out there uh, last year with uh, Zapata Courage from the from A and R from the yeah, wetlands. Wetlands, yeah. And she determined that it was not a wetland. It wasn't even class three. Uh, it was just a wet field. Yeah. Um, but but we will not be grading or or removing or excavating any of that soil. It will just sit there. Uh, we will drive posts into the ground to right. the solar array, and they will be eventually pulled out. Uh, but the soil itself will be left alone. Yeah. If anybody wants to grow rice there or something. <laughs> well, no, that's, yeah, that's the trouble with their, their maps. They, mm -hmm. there's a big difference between prime ag soil and prime ag land. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but that's just all I wanted to know because that was, came up on Colburn's and I, again, I'm not dealing with farmers, so they don't understand things, but I try to educate them that, you know, just because the state says that something doesn't mean it is. So, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's, all right. Yeah, that's all I needed to okay. know. Like yes, I'm going to jump for the question. Is there a projected life of this project or you're going to say it's forever? Yeah. <laughs> no, I could be quicker than that. Well, there's five to four different answers. Um, it'll probably be working fine in 35 or 40 years. The panels are, are warranted for 25 years. And we are gonna actually own the land. Uh, Green Lantern is, is buying the property from the Barnards and will own it and stay in as the investor. And so, you know, 30, 35 years from now, we'll have to make a decision. Um, do, we, do we upgrade it with the latest, greatest solar technology and basically just retrofit it and keep running it as a solar array? Or do we, completely decommission it and sell the land for some other reason. And I can't predict that, but those are the, those are the sorts of scenarios we'll be looking for. All right, we got a motion, we needed a second. I uh, second it. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks very much. Do you have a, a physical letter that you could give us to sign? All I have is the one the planning commission signed. Um, I yeah, sent one, you a new one. Oh, you did? I did. All right. Um, I can get that signed. It's again by the chair of the board. Yes, that would be fantastic. I'll work something out with you. Yep, sure. Yeah, I sent it with the new packet of material. Okay. Well, then I, I may have it here. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay. That's the same letter. Right. Planning Commission replaced with. I got your right. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure he is, John. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Anyway, thank you all very much. Yep, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Oh, you take care. Take care. Yep. Stay safe. She'll sign, it. She'll sign it. I can uh, you scan. Want to keep a copy, so. Yeah, I'll scan it and get it to you. Everyone. Thanks so much. Thank okay. you. Have a nice evening. Take care. Bye. Right. Later. Thanks, Mr. Bernard. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got How's it going? Good. Good. This, yeah, you can it here after. How are you folks? Very good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I will simply say what he said. Um, <laughs> basically the same routine. I don't need to go into it. I brought, um, just because we updated the um, landscaping plan and the site plan a little bit to address some concerns that Matt had about being able to hay around the corner of where we propose the landscaping plan. Okay. Should I just send them around? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Oops. And then this goes with the with the landscaping. Okay, so <clears throat> how many copies? Are there There's five. Copies? It's okay. one of each of every. Okay. One, one of each, Joe. One of each. Take one and pass it down. <clears throat> the same that you would with that. That, uh, that shows the when the landscape plan comes around, there's some arrows showing where the photos were taken from. The photos are on the last thing that's in front one. And then I did send a uh, Word version of the letter. It's a hard copy, but I did. I can't tell with my fingers anymore. What I got? Nine 
not get one of these? Uh, you get an extra. Property is this on? This is on. Uh, this is Matt Hart. Is the landowner? So, Mr. Hart uh, is the the current landowner. We're going to do what um, we're doing on the other project, which is to subdivide off the array footprint and the boundary lines around it, and purchase it from Mr. Hart, and then we'll keep the array on it. So the basically the same same story. The panels are good for 25 years. We may cycle them out at the end. You know, somebody else may want to buy it. Uh, we will have a decommissioning plan that has to be approved by the PUC to take them down at the end of the life because we own both the property and the land. It's not going to be a problem. Um, our company has a hundred arrays in Vermont, um, all over the place in 66 different towns. So, you know, we've, this is our, not our first rodeo and it's obviously not our first rodeo in Pittsburgh either. Um, so the, uh, as I said, the site plan um, was modified just a little bit. The landscaping that is going around the uh, edges of the array um, are to um, uh, to mediate the aesthetic views from uh, from Route Three, both from a northbound and from southbound. We moved the road around just a little bit, so this is the most recent final version. Um, but if anybody had gotten a copy from the planning commission, you'll see it's a little bit different. I just want to make sure I explained why that was. Um, to address the um, soils question, this is on statewide. Um, you can see that type is really tiny on the on the smaller versions. Um, I sent around electronic copies so you can zoom in on them if you want. I finally figured out how to use the zoom function on my phone so I can read the back of the aspirin bottle. Um, <laughs> I, that's I just it's not there anymore. Um, but uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, it's a 500 kilowatt project. Um, there's three phase down there. It's on a different circuit than the circuit that uh, Ralph's project is on. His circuit comes up from the south. Ours comes down from the north. Um, and there's there's uh, the GMP has done their study, um, and it's good to interconnect whenever we can uh, whenever we can get it in the ground. Um, we will do a 45 day uh, notice um, after we get all of the approvals, um, assuming we get them. We've got the planning board approved it on the 22nd. Hopefully you guys approve it tonight. Uh, Rutland Regional meets on the 12th. Is that right? Something like that? Um, Next couple third, of weeks. Third Tuesday, whatever that works out to be. Okay. Probably so not the be 12th. week 20, after. 20 something, yeah. Uh, 19th. 19th? Okay. Oh, okay, so the following week. I guess. What's today? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyway, anyway, but anyway, by the end of May. Yes. I mean, yes. Before the end of May. Yeah. Before the end of May. So then, shortly after that, I suspect we'll issue our forty-five day notice. And as Ralph said, that goes to all the abutters. It goes to all the state agencies. Ag and markets will weigh in on the prime ag soils question. A and R will weigh in on all the bugs, birds, and bunnies. Um, and then um, we'll need a curb cut permit. We'll come back for that, and we'll come back for the subdivision approval as well. Do we have any questions? Nope. Okay. Make motion approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 There you go. Fantastic. Thank you guys very Thank much. Gentlemen. We're have Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I'll scan an email Welcome. to you in the morning. That'd be great. Thank you, John. Thank you all very much. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. It. Have a good one. Have a great night. Good luck. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We've just put a bunch of panels on the sawmill roof. I haven't, haven't got them hooked up yet, but in the process. Did you pass the other one along to John, or did we lose it already? No, I one passed. One? I give it all to Kelly. Oh, okay. Kelly, you'll keep track of it. She will. I thought I lost it. I, I'm like, well, you're giving it to Tom. Yes. <laughs> well. Okay. okay. But nobody else here for anything. Okay, so Elizabeth is actually here for the library coin drop. All right, bring it, Liz. Coin no drop. Way. Hey guys. Hey. I know I'm a new face. <laughs> to keep you do have a face. I, I thought do. you were just a mask. Here it is. Yeah. Um, we were looking to do a coin drop for the library on the 28th in front of Lothrop, which we did in 2019. 28th of August. What, yes, not the 28th of this month. Okay, well. Uh, what else do you guys need to know? I'm really new at this. So uh, and the purpose was just fundraising for the library. General fundraising. We've done it pretty much every year. 
No. Not because of COVID last year. Mm -hmm. um, 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock? Yes, 10 o'clock. 10 to 1? Yeah. You sure? Why do you hate those hours? <laughs> Dang, didn't you say that was busy? I don't get up until 10. Oh, boy. He's going to have to get up earlier. Oh, no, Hank. Well, you got till we'll one to drive to through. You ought to be able to, to get up at 10. I it takes there. you an hour to get. I wouldn't dare to drive through a crowd like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, so, I'm asking for your approval state for our library. Or, right. I move that we approve this. Well, Joe had a question, and that's whether the state has a role. Yes. Like yes. Well, it's, we have it's the all contingent on the state. The yes. yes. approval, but it'll be helpful for the town to sign off yeah, on the police chief yeah. on their VTrans form, and I'll send that uh, contact to Brian Sanderson at VTrans to you tomorrow morning. Fabulous. All right. Um, be too bad for us to give you a go ahead and then the state say no. Right. We don't want that. I haven't said that no yet. Uh, all right. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, Jane. Hey, you're welcome. All right. Then we have another uh, right away permit. Yes, we do. And this one is from Stephen Wernhoff on Woodland Drive. Um, Chad has uh, looked it over and approved it subject to the condition that the driveway be sloped so water does not run into the road. That's kind of a standard condition. Right. And it's just changing, right, Chad? They're changing where their driveway is? Yeah, they're added a little bit to, um, they're installing the shed garage. So, yeah, I mean, it's nothing out of the ordinary there. So. It, it, take, it looks like it takes one dry, <laughs> driveway and kind of creates a horseshoe kind of thing. Oh, I wasn't sure by that. Yeah, if it was just... Up the, right? Well, I think he's adjusted it from that horseshoe shape because uh, Dig Safe changed it, but it's... So it's going to be kind of where the existing driveway is, kind of next to it and running alongside that. Okay. So, spoke with him this morning about change there, but... And looks good. Need a motion for that. Yeah. I'll make the motion. We accept it. All right, I'll second. As presented. All in favor say aye. 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 We gotta sign that. We do. Thank you for that reminder, John. <laughs> I see it. Sign it on this side, the left side. <laughs> I see the arrow. <laughs> yeah. Always follow the arrow. Yeah. Remember that? You used to follow the bouncing ball at the movie houses. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's taking it back. Bouncing ball at the movie houses. They'd have like, like with, the, song, with the music. The lyrics up on the screen. So it's like oh, accent oh, playing wrong. Huh? Oh, I just saw them. Happened to movie theater kids. Oh, that's <laughs> loud. Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> not loud. Sorry to no, hear that. Yeah, missed well, the no. Balls. Missed the bouncing balls. Oh, well. I'm sure I missed a lot of other things, too. <sighs> All right, dog warrant. Yes, um, as I said before the meeting, Helen has presented me with a four page list of all the dogs that have been registered this year. And it's now on the uh, select board's agenda to so sign off on it to acknowledge the receipt of it. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Chad, the natives are getting restless. <laughs> At the bottom, yeah, anywhere you like. No wrong. I know. I know. I oh, okay, it. well, I, okay. Oh, I just, I'm just you, watching your ass. No, I appreciate that. Language. I appreciate that. Look, I have a checklist. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I didn't. <laughs> the other chair used to mess stuff. So. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> There's several, there's several previous chairs. I know, a bunch of people. I know, I'm that. safe saying that. <laughs> I'm safe. Hey, resemble everybody. Be <laughs> careful, we're on school, buddy. <laughs> All right, so last thing is the uh, substation. And that's uh, very brief. I hadn't heard anything, and so I reached out to Dennis Carroll at Omia and Gary Kupfer, the town's attorney. Gary explained he's been quite hectic. He plans to do the title work uh, next week such that we might be able to have a closing by the end of next week. All right, cool. Good. It's like, is it, is it like a 30 day thing? Situation? Yeah, but it's clear that neither side is interested in uh, enforcing that or scotching the deal, so. Okay, great. No one has anything else, we're adjourned. Oh, single. <laughs>